Okay, it's that glorious time of the year when we launch the boat. Only trouble is, we're a little late. And you know what? I'm not gonna get into all the details as to why that is so, but there's plenty of good reasons. But we're doing it. So here we go. Part of the reason for the delay here is we got a brand new cover because the other one has thoroughly oxidized itself and you could just stick a finger through it and it would just break open. So that's not too good for protecting the boat. So new cover. All right, on the first try, I got this thing kind of lined up with the ball anchor. Push it over a little bit. stop. All right, we're gonna leave you folks out of this struggle and just move on from here. All right, after a minimal amount of fedaddling, we finally got the whole thing lashed together, so we're good to go. We're gonna head on down to the marina, which is about one minute away, and dump this thing in the water. Here we go. Ready to launch. Okay. Ready to launch. Okay. Keep coming. Just uh, slide it back and then rip. Yep. You're done. Well, we're on the water. How about that? I got to fiddle around a little bit here with uh, make sure the motor's working right and then push off and yada, yada, yada. And then we go sailing back up and dock it up for the year. The motor runs. The uh, bay is full of boats and the water is calm. And Lake George is eternally beautiful. So for you tourists who are on board with us today, that's Green Island over there. And it's uh, got the big fancy hotel here on Lake George. Plus, they've got the largest collection of police boats anywhere on the planet. And it's a job in the summer that's just uh, hard to turn down. There's the Morgan. That's the uh, Sagamore's boat for little tourist enterprises when they want to go for a spin in the evening, cocktail hour wise. I've noticed some new construction over here on this shore over here and it's it may be something that got rebuilt or it's brand new. I don't know. I gotta go take a look at it. Let's look together. There's the new house or else they build it on the remains of an old house. That happens around here. This house up here is more or less, it's about two years old I think. That just got put in. And the new place. Big giant crane. They must have been lifting some roof pieces on or something. Tongue Mountain and Black Mountain. Black Mountain is on the right further in the back. It's up there in the Narrows. It's the tallest mountain on the lake. Okay, here comes the tricky part. I have to fit this thing in between two boats all by myself. This will be fun. And since I don't have a head mounted camera, it's all gonna have to happen out of view of you, my dear viewers. Here we go. Yeah, without much drama, I was able to pull it off. This close to that boat and this close to this boat. Well, I just spent about 30 minutes readjusting all the ropes and spring lines so that it's finely tuned. Okay, it's done. This was a summer of big storms with big wind. So just about a week ago, we had some tornadic thunderstorms blow through town here. They had actual confirmed tornadoes in Chestertown, which is a little to the north. But right along here, this is East uh, West Scroon River Road. And a traffic noise you hear is the Adirondack Northway that goes to Montreal. And I think you can see the big mess over here between this road and the Northway. I mean, trees just ripped up, torn apart, and, and rearranged heavily. It looks like they may have lost some phone poles because there's a... Uh, there's a stick they just took and kind of wedged up the phone line to keep it off the road here. There's quite the jumble of, of trees that were blown down. Now, nobody's saying that this is tornadic here. This could have been straight line winds, but 
they still got a lot of work headed ahead of them, although maybe they're done right here, who knows? But there's more damage across the street here. You can see a lot of the trees have been topped and just stripped. And here we thought we were getting away from all the nasty weather in Florida by coming up north where things are calm. We're up here in Northwest Bay Creek and uh, there's quite a bit of wind damage up here. Pretty impressive. In fact, you can see some right there in the background. We'll go look at that in a second. And if you look up there in the woods, there's quite a clearing there that wasn't before. The woods was dense and you can see all the lumber laying on the ground. Something big came through and just snapped everything off. Well, this is a little bit of a shock. Here's a cabin along Northwest Bay, and they got a big old tree that went right through the, pretty much crushed the whole thing. Boom. The tree is still in the house. Yikes. So you might be wondering, Calvert the Dad, why are you operating this noisy vacuum out here? Clearly a shop vac. Well, we got a problem. Right down here by the front door, there's a little crack in the cement foundation. And there's a hornet's nest down there. And of course, conveniently located right by the front door. So, hazard of stinging. It's how to deal with it. Well, you could go nuts and spray poison down there, but that won't last. Here, watch this guy. He's trying to land. And he knows there's a hurricane right by the hole. And if he gets too close, he's going in. And this is a way to reduce the nest size down to 80, 90% less than optimal. And then you can spray in there and plug it and not worry about an invasion inside the house and they can't figure out how to get out. Don't try this at home. This is exterminator level stuff. Maybe I shouldn't even show you this. Anyway, Come back in 24 hours, this problem will be solved. Alright, so it may look like I'm some kind of a medieval knight ready for a joust, which in effect I am. I've got double layers of everything on me, including the spouse's uh, black fly helmet hat. Because I'm about to stab a big giant hornet's nest with my joust, pick it up and drag it over to the fireplace and hope not to get stung in the process. But I already knocked this ball of trouble out of the uh, underside of the deck here, over here. So here we go. Getting ready to stab. I think I'll back up a little bit just to give myself a little diplomatic immunity. And I don't know whether... Oh, it's pretty soft. Yeah. Here we go over to the fireplace. Okay, there. Didn't quite get rid of it, but now I did. Now I'm gonna do one last step, and you may wanna think about running if this becomes troublesome, because there's a, a remnant underneath the deck here that, uh, had a lot of activity in it, but I don't see much now. I see an occasional hornet flying out of there, but I'm just gonna scrape it with this guy. Just in case they were thinking of moving into a... Oh yeah, there's some people home there. Hope I made more of a mess of my myself. All right, somebody died, hornet's nest dealt with, and uh, let's move on. So thanks to the abundant wildlife, uh, growing stuff down at ground level, uh, let's say in the vegetable realm, is kind of impossible. Too many critters are more than willing to bust through your little fence and chew on your tomato plants. So the only solution is my giant tomato Christmas tree. And uh, you might recall in episode one, I featured uh, my planting here in this little deck top plastic tub which is very good with you know you put nice dirt in there and things grow like crazy but look what happens when you fertilize it and you get all this nice rain and heat the thing's the size of a christmas tree not only is it growing to the sky but it's also heading toward the ground here with this stuff that sort of accidentally got hung off the deck and now it's probably about 
10 or 12 feet in length. Little, these are grape tomatoes. You can see how many grape tomatoes are growing in here. And you keep heading downhill, and we've already picked three red ones. But look at the, look at the accumulation of them in here. Whoa, I see some red ones right back in there. You can probably just see them in the shadows. All right, we've zoomed ahead a couple of months, actually months, yeah. And uh, the tomato plant here is still more than seven feet tall and 10 feet deep because it goes down over the side and it's still producing like crazy. Check out what I just picked. Look at that. What a haul. I'm getting this brand next summer. Every once in a while, you gotta kind of stop and smell the roses and pinch yourself and say, I am beyond lucky to be able to live in a place like this. Yeah. Thanks for being with us. Good night, everybody.